Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024, brought to you by Filmio, a very cool company that puts the power to greenlight movies in the hands of fans and creators. If you want to learn more about what Filmio is doing, check out their website, film.io. Hello to the team from Mugai. Congratulations from short to feature. It's quite the accomplishment. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. So a lot of people out there are first going to learn about your movie through the festival. I'll give this duty to one of you because you both worked on the short. Who wants to give everyone a brief description of what the Mugai is about? Go for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're up, Shari. Uh, so, I think you should do like every other <laughs> sentence. <laughs> the, <laughs> word Let's at a time. Each other. Yeah. <laughs> Sandwiches. Um, um, so the Mugai is a, uh, at, at the f- face of it, it's a um, genre film a horror story about a family who are going through a, an extremely traumatic experience post the birth of their second child um, the mother Sarah starts to see things and experience things that aren't necessarily there for everyone else um, and that's kind of what it seems like it's also an allegory for the stolen generations uh, um, policies in that that uh, dragged on through Australia's history and is still dragging on today. Um, but yeah, essentially, my character um, is a kind of you know high functioning, very successful, sees what she wants and gets it kind of gal. And uh, for the first time in her life, she seems to be losing a bit of her mind and uh, a grip, a sense of reality. But um, no one else quite believes her. And um, she just can't cop a break, really. <laughs> well, I can't wait to dig into those details. But the first thing I wanted to ask the two of you, because I get very obsessed with the idea of people finding collaborators and then having that long time creative partnership together. And I know you had that. So can you recall the first time you met and what you saw in the other that signaled to you like this is someone I want to work with forever? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it actually goes back to drama school. 16 uh, years ago. 16 years ago, we were at NIDA together. And um, um, I'm really at the, at the core of it. It was We were two Aboriginal students in, a, in an institute of not a lot of Aboriginal students. Like we were two out of four, I think. Um, and so we bonded over that. And mm. um, yeah, we've and done... Then, uh, when I, once I graduated, we did The Sapphires, which was yeah. another film. And it, I think there was a couple of projects that just happened to coincide that we were in the same f- for I don't know a span we were of like peripheral 10 but years. we never sort of talked to each other on yeah. screen or anything this is the, <laughs> yeah. this is actually the first time that we've acted one on one together yeah. in in any project I think so that was exciting and you yeah. know we'd been dying to work with each other in that um, close proximity so knowing each other but then working one on one together for the first time here can you each pinpoint something that the other did on set that made you stop and say to yourself like I knew you were good but I didn't know you were capable of that Oh yeah I think there was a there's a scene in the film where um uh between us two and um we we we're, we're at the hospital and I I think it's very high stakes high tension and um you know um I'm there giving my all, and then Shari's matching and going above me. So it was um, it was good to be able to play in that in that domain and um, be able to with that such high emotion and such um, and just being sitting in an awe of Shari's talent and, and being able to um, have to bring my A game to the to the plate. So. I love that this is on video now. Forever. <laughs> um, I'm not even gonna let this down, am I? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, I think for me, there was a. I, I very rarely got to see the the split or the, you know watch the monitor at all. But there was a scene where I saw Maine in the hospital as well in the psych ward actually. Um, and uh, he's with our. Uh, the, he's the character's bringing the our eldest daughter, and there was just a really kind of beautiful sense of. Um, vulnerability and terror and strength and you know all of those complex things and it's like oh wow I know I've seen him do everything I've, I've heard him talk for so many years um <laughs> we were housemates at one we were housemates point on too, stage yeah. we're best friends in real life um but to actually yeah to kind of have a moment to watch him and go oh far out this this like that's my brother boy and he's he's Freaking awesome. Yeah. That's on camera too. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Filmmaking families and continued <laughs> partnerships just make me so, so happy. I love hearing about them. Uh, broad question for you about Horror Bella, because the last time you were here, of course, was for Relic, which mm-hmm. is streaming now on Shutter. So if you haven't seen it, what are you waiting for? <laughs> what keeps you coming back to the genre for more, more? But then can you pinpoint something about the Mugai that signaled to you this will add another layer to genre storytelling? Mm. Uh, good question. Uh, 
It's so funny because obviously I seem to do a bit of horror and I get asked about it a lot and I love horror films when they're a vehicle for something bigger. Like, I mean, when I was a teenager, I'd watch any slasher film. I was into all of them. But now, like, it has to be an allegory. And the thing I love about this is, like, it's really dark subject matter and a dark time in Australia's past, present. And, um, but, like, the Here Comes the Aeroplane of the Horror Vehicle for that. Uh, it makes it really entertaining. And, you know, it's funny. I haven't seen the film and I reread the script a couple of nights ago just to remind myself, you know, ahead of coming here and... I was like, man, it's so good. It just like sucked me in and um, spat me out covered in tears. So, uh, yeah, I I just think it's a really important story and I'm really excited. I'm just really proud to be involved, actually. It's one of my favorite genre. It is my favorite genre. And I just, I love how you can use genre storytelling mm -hmm. to dig into like really difficult human truths. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's an easier way to process mm -hmm. it. I also just love having fun with the horror genre. So just for all three of you, what is the horror subgenre that scares you most? Horror sub I, I like a psychological thriller. Like that's uh, that's where the domain where it, you're not. It's not something that there's a force in the in or something in the house kind of thing. It, there's more. It's going up between the ears, and I think that subgenre is really interesting to me. Solid choice. Yeah, I like a supernatural thriller when it's you know the the monster is kind of staved off screen for as long as possible so you get that like it's my imagination doing much more work than um than audiences are used to so our imagination yeah. is often way more yeah. horrifying than what we see that's on that's exactly right yeah <laughs> Have a that's what i was gonna say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but it is because you know and and the idea of the psychological horror too and just like all the things your brain will do to fill the gaps that are often more terrifying than than what's actually on the screen. Just a selfish mm. question, because again, I love horror. For each of you, if you had the opportunity to join the iconic horror franchise of your choice, what franchise would you pick and why? I have many suggestions if you need them. <laughs> yeah. uh, nah, Scream's fun. Scream's fun because yeah, one. Oh, I, I've got the Scream mine. franchise. It was yeah. so big. You fun. can all you can all pick Scream if you want. Well, I think because that's our generation. We grew up with that mm. that film coming out at the time, so that that was always a fun one for me. Yeah. I really like uh, Conjuring is one of my favorite films. So, but I also like just how silly it's gotten. So, I think in terms of a, a fun journey, it's like to start off with something so kind of sophisticated and then end up with Annabelle. Like, <laughs> count me in. <laughs> I mean, can we also say it's maybe not technically uh, a series, but The Craft? I mean, they made a second oh, one. Oh, they did. Is yeah. that film technically like a the series original now. Craft? That was yeah. iconic yeah. when I was at school. All like, excellent choices right there. I will also pitch Final Destination. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. My favorite horror franchise is that doesn't get the yes. credit it's oh, It's terrifying when you go on the road and these, there's like a wood on the back of a, or you're on a plane and it's like, uh, uh, look, everyone's looking I'm around. Yeah. 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 I always wonder if, yeah. I, if I booked a flight and it was flight 180, would yeah. I actually get on it? I probably would. Um, back to your film now. For the two of you having worked on the short, I'm curious, what is something about your version of the character in the short that you knew you wanted to hold tight to and bring to the feature, but then also what is a new layer that you were especially excited to add in the feature length version? Uh, I think for me it was Sarah's deep maternal um, love, unconditional, deep, protective and fierce love for her children and her family and what costs, at what lengths she'll go to protect that. Uh, what was, that's what I would, that's what I wanted to hold on to. Um, what was new to me was actually um, John then sort of flipping that on its, on its head in a way and um, maybe on the surface she doesn't seem like the most maternal person. So it became a bit more complicated in that sense. Um a mother that isn't necessarily, you know, going to like she wasn't overly coddling to her children or anything like that. So, yeah, I thought it was. A I have fun, fun. an impossible question to yes. ask you about that. I'll let Main answer first, and then we'll circle back. <laughs> yeah, and no, I think I think in the short, I really wanted to hold on to the reality and the stakes, knowing that we're going into a genre film, and um, you know, we've got a malevolent spirit in the film, but it's also making sure it's keeping grounded, I suppose, because that's, that's your gateway into the genre, I suppose. And then I think when it came to the feature, what I liked with the character and the exploration um, that I could go further with was he turned out to be a bit of a 
gaslighting bastard. And that was fun to play with, you know, like, um, and I, I, I relished in that opportunity. Okay, so two impossible questions. First one's for you, Bella, because yeah. no no small roles in a movie, and it really it, it blows my mind when someone's able to take limited screen time su to support the main character's narrative, but also make sure that their character feels like they're whole and they have history. Mm. What's the secret sauce? How do you pull that off? <laughs> uh, great director and an acting coach. That's my secret sauce. I, I just have to do all the work beforehand, I think. Because um, it's also the thing that I find the most terrifying about that is you're also coming onto the film. Like typically once it's already started, uh, I feel like the kind of new kid at school and you're there for maybe a week or two. Like it's it's a brief period and you need to like fit into the world. And I'm, I'm uh, for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's bizarre and backwards, I feel much more responsibility when I have a small role in a film. Like, oh God, I don't want to be like, these guys are great. And I don't want to be like the dud that stands out then like, and I, and, and I'm going to stop talking about my insecurities. Um, <laughs> We've yeah, all got them. Yeah, we were like, yep, yep, <laughs> same, same. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're great director. Wait, just to follow up, because I feel like we also don't talk about acting coaches nearly enough. Can you tell me something about your acting coach that you really appreciate and kind of suits how you best like to receive and apply notes? Um, so I started working, her name's Warner Laughlin, and I had worked with many other people previously and the thing that I love about her because typically I will just use substitution like my mom died when I was young and I will just like flog that dead horse on every film that I could and, you know I had a brother who died a uh, half brother anyway so like I would just use that again and again and it's traumatizing and not good for your psyche mm -hmm. and also there's some days when you get on set and your brain's just like no I'm not going there I'm not going into that and the thing about Warner is that she has this way like of creating a whole life and history for that character and like sort of like memories that what there's different lingo that she uses but that that I can then like put on like a coat and take off and it feels just as authentic but it like at the end of the day I'm not shattered oh it's such an important thing to be able to do all right I'm going to end with my other impossible mm -hmm. question so you kind of brought this up before a little bit what is the key to playing your character with authority but while knowing that in the end product she needs to spark doubt in the viewers yeah. Ah, uh, gosh. Which you do quite uh, well. Uh, uh, great. Uh, we haven't seen it. So, uh, <laughs> um, do you know, uh, I think it was um, constantly checking in with John that where we were pitching her, you know, as, as um, people are aware, you filming is all out of, you know, sequence and you try and stay as close to scene order as you can. Um, but checking in with John every day uh, and um, just actually having conversations all the time about her internal life um and what this sense like losing what losing control feels like to her because she's never experienced it before um and you know it's i think a lot of women yet yeah, it's kind of a scary thing because we have such little of it to begin with in society so when you fight so hard for it um and then it's being dragged away from you um it's it's quite scary so yeah that's a great question thank you no no easy answer to that like yeah. it, it feels like like movie magic that my brain can't begin to process so job very well done thank in that you respect very much. That's huge awesome congratulations question. on the Moo guy and thank you so much for being here and sharing some of your experience making the movie with us uh, thank, thank you, for having you. Us. so everyone out there keep an eye out for the Moo guy and also all more interviews from sundance 2024 and finally thank you to filmio